Hello, everybody. Ella J here on behalf of Russell Zone. And today I am joined by an internationally traveled superstar, Myla Grace. How are you today? Hi, I'm great. Thanks. How are you? I am so good to finally be talking with you. We were talking about off air. This has been uh, months in the making well before you were, uh, you know, on the road with your current venture, which will obviously start off with I'm talking about Marigold. You have been there for about, what, two months now? How has it been adjusting to life in Japan so far in comparison to the UK and Ireland where you're originally from? So honestly, everybody told me that when I got here, I would have like a month massive culture shock like I would freak out but I found it quite easy like I think because I was so into like the Japanese culture and stuff like I was I was prepared yeah. a bit um to be honest I do watch a lot of vlogs on on TikTok and stuff like I had for yeah. a lot of years so I was kind of like had a rough idea what to expect um so it wasn't too like crazy for me like I kind of settled quite well I think yeah, I think so too. You know, you're, you've been traveling from Tokyo, you know, you've made some trips to see your friend L.A. Taylor, which we'll talk about later. So you've been kind of up and down Japan. You've had some free time to explore and enjoy the food. So, so far in the two months since you've been there, what aspects of Japan have really stood out to you, whether it's food or the scenes, the sights? Tell us what's just stood out to you so far. Uh, well, obviously, like Japan beautiful like it really really is like it's it's like the movies but the food is oh my god the food is amazing like I love the food I'm like every day I'm like right I need to you know stop because gotta get into resting gear but then someone's like you want to go and grab some and I'm like of course like yes like there's no question I have to <laughs> it's so good like I love the food so much what meals and or snacks have you really enjoyed uh, so I love yakiniku. So there's like an all you all you can eat one, and um I've actually been going there quite a bit with um you know L J Cleary. He's been wrestling with Noah, so like every week, like we'll kind of go for like our weekly yakiniku, and we'll just eat. You get like ninety minutes, and we'll let you just eat everything and everything. It's so, and then we're like, I, I think I feel okay, but we'll do one more round, and then when you leave, you're like, oh, I should not have done that. <laughs> but it's so good it's so so good <laughs> I'm so curious too from you know a traveling perspective and everything there's so many I mean I've never been to Japan so I can't vouch for it first time but I have to imagine there's a lot of cool scenes that's very different you're kind of centered around a lot of big cities what uh scene wise exploration wise site wise has really stood out to you I think just the whole Tokyo in general like you know when you you see something on TV quite a bit and then you go there and you're like, oh, you know that that sound? It's yeah. like, okay, let's go. <laughs> like, it hasn't been like that at all. You're like, whoa, like, this is like the movies and more. Like, it's so cool. Like, I've been to Shibuya probably God knows how many times, but every time I go, I like take it in. I always get a wee video and I'm like, I can't believe I live here. Like, it's insane. Like, it is so crazy. Yeah. And, you know, we'll kind of reel it back to the beginning because I know this is something that uh, you would kind of alluded to even before it was officially announced. So it's been in the works for a hot minute. How did your involvement yeah. in, in Marigold really come about? When did all of that begin for you? So honestly, I have wanted to go to Japan for so many years, yeah. but with lockdown and everything else, it was just it was just harder for foreigners to get over. Um, And then and I was in America in December and I'd spoke to Nikki Cross and she's like, have you ever been to Japan? And I was like, no, like I really wanted to, blah, 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 blah. And she was like, hold on a minute. Um, and she had actually messaged Terry Zane. And then a few days after Christmas, I got an email and it was like, you want to come to Japan? And I was like, hell yeah, like, yes. Yeah. So I've known since January and I haven't been able to tell anybody and like there's been so many people who's like been going oh you know would you go to Japan or like they've been speaking of their experience in Japan like and I've had to just sit there and pretend like I don't know anything and it's been killing me because it's been the most exciting news and I wanted to tell so many people for so long but I just I had to just tell my dog and a few other people that was it <laughs> You know, that's fair I'm so curious and even and even with you when you were like oh like let's do yeah. an interview and I was like because it was getting close to the announcement yeah. I was like okay let's let's hold up because I, I have something exciting coming up in a few weeks 
Yeah, and, and and typically when somebody says that, I'm like, okay, we can hold off. I want to see what this is. And then when I saw, you know, it was uh, Marigold, uh, you and Zeta Steele, you know, really have done a lot together. And we'll talk about this frenemy ship in, in a minute, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm, I'm so curious for you, you know, it's especially your debut in Japan, from what I understand, too. So yeah. take us take us back to your Marigold debut at Fields Forever. What emotions were you feeling in your tag team match with Nagusa Nazaki? Honestly, I was, I'm quite good at like keeping my nerves like intact before a match, but I was so nervous. I think it's just because I knew for so long, like this is what I wanted and it was finally here and it was Kirk and Hall and it was like, oh my God, like I'm in Japan and it, it was just all so real. So I was so nervous going out and, um, but after I was just like, really emotional because I was like I did it like I wrestled in Japan like this is my biggest dream come true and yeah it was just amazing and now you've wrestled in Japan like 14 times and you still got several other dates now coming up at the time of recording yeah. you got two tag team matches coming up one of them is with like I said kind of your friend of me Zeta Steele she was doing a recent interview I don't know if you've seen it but she was doing a recent interview with my good friend muscle man Malcolm kind of talking about your uh relationship so how has it been working with her in the ring so far and behind the scenes tell us more about this real this interesting relationship with zeta steel <laughs> <laughs> so when me and zeta get along it's great i'm like besties love it and then she'll just have this random outburst and she'll just like turn on me and i'm like what the hell like i thought we had an agreement that we were going to go and win these tag titles like why why did you just attack me bitch like calm down but yeah, on Saturday it's the first round of the um of the tag tournament. So I don't know, we're gonna have to get on the same page somehow because <laughs> we both want some gold. So but yeah, it has been fun, but it's very unpredictable. That's that's all I can say. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, Marigold, you know, they just crowned a trio of new champions, I believe. And obviously these Marigold twin star tag team titles are coming now. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts heading into the first round of this tournament? Because not only do you have to worry about your opponents, but you you might have to watch your, your back a little uh, on your own tag team partner. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it just got announced today. So um, I'm still trying to process things. I'm still trying to figure out what, what how I'm going to go about this because I haven't even seen Zeta yet. Um, we're going to have to have a talk because after our match on Saturday, she just attacked me. So we're going to have to have some words and get on the same page. And um, yeah, like you said, I'm going to have to have eyes at the back of my head because I'm, I'm going to be wrestling these two girls that get through the next round. But I also might need to wrestle my tag partner too. So I don't know. It's a, it's a lot to think about. <laughs> I, I'm so curious, too. You know, like we mentioned, you're one of the very few foreigners, uh, you know, not from Japan in this company so far on this tour. So, I mean, that's kind of a bonding thing for you. And that's kind of a bonding element for you and Zeta right there. But how has it been adjusting, like, from a, from a perspective? You said there wasn't really culture shock, but language barrier, too, I have to imagine, is something that you've been adjusting to and probably learning some Japanese. So how yeah. has that perspective been as coming in as a foreigner where you're kind of surrounded with people who are already familiar with the landscape and the culture? Well, the second I... Well, to be honest, I did do a bit of Duolingo a few years ago. And then in January, I started, like, I was strict every day go. on that streak. And then I came here and everything that green little bird taught me was useless. None of it came in handy. So I did get one of the Japanese girls um, to teach me like a few different phrases that are kind of like more for wrestling, you know, like certain words that I can kind of um, use with that. But um, yeah, it's been very difficult. But I do I do know enough to kind of get around and stuff. But Japanese languages, it's 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 really hard. <laughs> Yeah, it's so so hard, and no one speaks um any English over here. But um, so that's that's definitely been difficult. Now, style wise, too, Japan is a a lot known for its strong style, like very hard hitting and all that. You're obviously kind of used to that hard hitting nature, but I have to imagine strong style Japanese strong style is a little bit different than what you've been doing in the UK. So how has it been adjusting to, you know, the the style differences over in Japan and working with a lot of new performers? Well, my first singles match I had um 
against a Jap- just a Jap- me and a Japanese girl. Yeah. I remember just thinking like this is it. Like I I will see if I'm tough enough, if I can take it, if I can take the hits. Like this is, you know, do or die sort of thing. Um so I was super nervous, but after the match I was like, "You know what? I'm tough as nails. I got this." Like it was fine, you know, nothing that I haven't haven't took before. So um I definitely think that I am tough enough, so it was a nice little test, but um, in terms of just um the style difference, I think it just took me a few matches to realize that like okay, you know I do have this, like I'm good enough, and I can do this style. It just took me a few a few wee matches to kind of like believe in myself and and understand that I did did have it. Yeah, you know, gaining, you know, you're going to be there for a while. It's been about two months and, you know, each month is going to be the more, as they say, the more reps you get in, the more comfortable you're going to be. And obviously you've yeah. excelled at that, you know. So looking back, assessing this two months now, you're past the two month mark now at this point. Uh, what are some things that you've learned about yourself or about wrestling through your Japan, through your time in Japan so far? Honestly, I always thought that I was tough, but that that match confirmed to me that I was like, I, okay, I know it's not like a me uh, being Delulu and like convincing myself, like I know that I'm tough and I've got this. Um, so that was one thing that I did learn about myself. Um, I feel like over the past couple of weeks, like I've learned that you know, I I shouldn't have like imposter sy- syndrome. Like I I do have this. Like I am deserving to be here and um I am good enough like I, I have realized that um I have been trying some more stuff in ring that I did learn a training at home but never really had the opportunity to try and ring so because we have more time and more matches and um more females or I have had the opportunity to kind of like play around with my moveset and stuff a bit more so like there was a lot of things that I did at home that I hadn't really had the opportunity to try out matches and stuff but because I've been wrestling like so regularly and like the females here they're everybody's so good that I have had the opportunity to explore my moveset a bit more and um show more of what I can do what elements have you incorporated into your moveset from your Japan training experiences so I really love like chain wrestling like technical wrestling I feel like at home don't always get to do that because to be honest a lot of the fans don't appreciate it especially seeing women when I I'm here and the fans do they do appreciate seeing women's wrestle like that so um I've been really excited to kind of showcase like the things that I can do in that sort of style of wrestling I you know the crowds too are a different element you know in Japan they're more quiet more respectful generally whereas yeah. I know in America they're rowdy they're kind of a little bit rowdy in the in the UK too as well so how yeah. has that been adjusting to you know just the crowd atmosphere as well yeah it definitely took me a while to kind of get used to it being more quiet but also learning how to fill the the quietness um yeah. But yeah, it did definitely take me a while. I was like, what? what's going on? But um, yeah, it's I'm used to it now, though. <laughs> That's good. I'll go know. home and I'll hear someone <laughs> shout like, I don't know, like, yeah. And I'll be like, what is this? Like, I'm not used to that. It probably sounds so loud. But uh, right now, everything seems like as normal. <laughs> yeah, whenever you go back to the UK or maybe in America, you're going to be like, they, they are so loud. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to talk about obviously the recent Summer Destiny event. I think it's uh, Marigold's biggest event so far. A lot of names, three yeah. new champions crowned. Like we said, there's going to be some tag team champions crowned in the very near future. But obviously, one of the big uh, matches was Sari versus Julia for the Marigold World Championship. Sari obviously defeated Julia to win the title. You were there for it live and in person. What are your thoughts on uh, the match itself between Sari and Julia? Very hard hitting, very brutal, but I'm here for it. (laughs) Yeah, oh my God. I was watching it backstage because we had like little TVs and I was just sitting there going, those two, like they are two of the very very best in the world like I could not take my eyes off the screen at all like unbelievable the two of them like so so good yeah you know and uh, Sari now is going to be carrying this Marigold World Championship you know obviously your focus is on the tag title so far but I have to imagine the back of your mind you are also a singles competitor is this a a title you would like to pursue too as well in the future 
Oh, definitely, definitely. And that would be an, an ultimate dream match of mine. Like when I did NXT UK, she was there for a small bit. And I think she only had maybe like two, I don't know, a handful of matches. So I wasn't fortunate enough to, to have a match with her. But when I seen her in the ring live in person way back then, I was like, I... I need to wrestle her so that match is definitely definitely in my mind of, as one that I need to have and that's kind of coming full circle now because WWE you know NXT they had now have a relationship with Marigold we just saw EO Sky former WWE women's yeah. champion squaring off against Utami Haya Shishida in a first time matchup kind of full circle for Utami what was your thoughts again on seeing that live and also seeing you know EO Sky coming into the Marigold circle Honestly, when I was backstage, like like I said, yeah, I'm usually quite good with my nerves. That was another time I was not because I was fine the whole day, and then it was leading up to getting out. And I have like my wee um like Farah playlist and yeah. EO's music kit, and I looked and she was in the corner, and I was like, "There's EO there!" Like I use her music to get me fired up, and then I think everything just sort of hit me, and I got really emotional. And I was like, "What is going on? Like this night is crazy." But again, that match, I just could not take my eyes off it. The both of them were just unbelievable. Like I think EO could be the very best in the world she's amazing amazing um I was just more jealous that I didn't get to go outside and watch it like I had to watch it from the screen but even watching it from the screen like unbelievable and it's just so exciting to see everything that's going on at wrestling at the moment like you just don't know who's going to show up where or what's going to happen like we didn't know EO was getting announced that time at the show and you just don't know what's going to happen when it's it's so unpredictable and it's exciting now other than you know you're listening to her music you see her across the room did you have any other interactions with eo i know Kyrie sane was there as well too they've posted pictures did you have any backstage interactions with either of them um so i spoke to eo i just said like hi blah blah blah, blah. um but i kind of let her have her space because i knew she was wrestling yeah. and then obviously at the end i was just like that was that was amazing like that was so good yeah. um I spoke to Carrie quite a bit because obviously like she put my name forward and uh she came over and said hi and she was like like you're Nikki's friend and she kind of like and I was like yeah yeah I know I was like thank you so so much like this has been the biggest dream come true like you've no idea how much like this means to me and then I think after having that chat that's when I started getting emotional and everything started hitting me um and then it was music hit, and I was just like trying not to cry before. <laughs> uh, and it obviously you mentioned like this forbidden door, prohibited portal, whatever you want to call it, is kind of just let loose. Obviously, we had AJ Styles wrestling in Noah the same night. Yeah. You know, EO Sky coming over to Marigold. You know, you are obviously no stranger to the WWE slash NXT realm, as you said. You wrestled in NXT UK, if so. If the if you have the opportunity to wrestle in WWE again, whether it's NXT or main roster, I'm just going to assume maybe Nikki is probably one. But if you were able to go over, who are some competitors from the WWE and NXT world that you would like to work with? Oh, well, obviously, I would definitely love to wrestle Nikki. I feel like that's a match that needs to happen. Um, I would love to wrestle Rhea. Um, I love wrestling Baker. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like as well. I need to wrestle Lyra because I know knew her in the Indies. I knew her in Ireland. We trained together and stuff, but we never, never wrestled. Like not wow. even like a tag match, not even a rumble, nothing. We always just missed each other. So it was like when I made my debut, I was kind of like, it was me and another trainee for a while yeah. against each other while she was in the women's division. And then it was like, right, this is your last match now. You'll be in the women's division. And then the promotion closed down. And then she got signed to NXT UK and then I went to NXT UK, but she got injured. And then when she got cleared, she went to America. So yeah. we've just kept missing each other. Um, so I feel like that is a match that it, it has to happen sometime. Now, I because of the time differences and your work schedule, I don't even know if you've been able to keep up on WWE program, but I'm sure you're aware of Nikki's now kind of an abigail inspired character very horror-esque with the wyatt six i don't know if you've been able to keep up on it have you i don't even know if you've had time honestly with your schedule so i've kind of still been trying to work out how to watch wrestling over here um mm -hmm. but i have been keeping up with that because i'm like what is she doing she's a scary bitch like i'm like i have yeah. to see this i'm so intrigued so i have been keeping up with that stuff um I've been trying to keep up with like bits of highlights, but yeah, I've, I've been like 
glued into that like definitely keeping up with um the wild stuff yeah so I, i'm so curious you know nikki was off screen gosh i don't even know it's it's been a while she had been seen in october i think it'd been probably at least six months since we last saw her on wwe television before that you know so you're very close with her this is obviously something she's been looking forward to for a while it seems like what are your thoughts on uh her kind of run and the wyatt six so far in their recent debut Oh my god! I just think not. I'm not a horror fan, but I think it's just it's so cool. It's so like it just draws you in. You just have to watch it. Like I, it's one thing that I cannot miss. Like the second I see that they have like promo or a package or whatever, I'm like I sh- straight on need to like go watch it. Um, I just think it's amazing to see because she's so so talented, and um, I feel like it's more suited to her. So yeah, I just it's really really exciting. So I, I'm I love it for her. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very excited too. I I love horror elements, and I feel like this is something that she can do very well. She's kind of played yeah. similar, but not as horror as characters in the in the past, and this is kind of cranked up. You know, it's elevated. I'm very excited to see what they put together and all that, and especially yeah. Nikki is very deserving, like you said. You know, yeah. And you know, you were talking about uh, wrestlers in WWE who you want to work with, but you are going to be in Japan for a while in, in Marigold and all around there. So who are some performers that you haven't worked with yet in a singles capacity that you'd like to square off with in the future? Uh, so I'd obviously love to wrestle Julia, uh, yeah. Yutami. Um, I love to wrestle Yuzuki. Like there's so many. I just, I feel like I haven't, even the ones I have wrestled in singles, like I, I want to do it again. Like, yeah. um, Natsumi, I wrestled in singles just a few weeks ago, but she just won the title. So I'm like, rematch. Like, I, I want a title shot. You know, um, I feel like even though I've had quite a few matches now, I still haven't had that many. I haven't really wrestled, um, anybody to death. Like, I'm still excited for every single match. Um, so there's so many people that I do really want to wrestle still. Yeah, and you didn't get to wrestle her in Japan, but you got to reunite with your good friend, L.A. Taylor, who was in Japan yes. uh, right in the month of June, you know, with the for a tour for TJPW. You got to caught up. You get to catch up in Tokyo. Tell us about your reunion. Yeah, so we didn't get to see each other as much as we would have liked okay. to. Uh, it was quite late at night by the time because I think there was like trouble with her flight or something because we were going to maybe go to Disney or whatever. Um, So we only had a few hours together but we were like let's like even though it's only a few hours let's still make time to go see each other so uh we just really went for food and did a bit of shopping we got our photo at the Hachiko statue and um that was it really but it was just so cool this year because we had literally did a buttons uh tour a few months before and I think she knew she was going to Japan and I knew I was going to Japan but like no one said because you weren't allowed this sort of thing um, so it was just really cool that we were like, remember, we were just in the chalet like a few few months ago and I were in Tokyo. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, you know, what an exciting opportunity for both of you. Again, both of your debuts in Japan as well that are long time dreams, you know, and kind of shifting focus to more uh, personally in yourself. You know, uh, when I was watching Zeta's interview uh, recently, she, you know, Obviously, you guys are frenemies, but the, there was one thing that she was very clear on. She admired your ring gear game. You know, you have you always oh. have had cute gear. So and I, you. you know, that's a statement that you can't really refute. So I'm glad that she recognized that. So what would you say are your general sources of inspiration when you are crafting and envisioning your ring gear designs? Because you've always had super cute gear, girl. Oh, thank you. Uh, honestly, my go-to was always, I don't know if you would even know Little Mix, you know Little Mix the band? Yes, yes. So I love Leanne from Little Mix style. So I actually, one of my early sets of gear was, it wasn't inspo, it was literally a rip off of her gear. I literally was like, can you make this gear? And every I remember at the time, everybody thought this gear was amazing. And I like thought it was so iconic. Looking back, it wasn't that great, but, um, at the time it was, and, but it was literally a complete rip off of her. So I love, um, anything that she wears like I'll save I have like a wee album on my Instagram and I just save a lot of stuff um I love like hip hop stuff like street style and I just try and and then I'll just sit in my iPad and I'll just see what kind of I can take from um, those clothes and and make into gear like honestly you know my uh I had a gear and it was like half white half black and it had like yeah. flames on it 
that was literally I seen like a random man's shirt on Pinterest and it was like I was like I really love that it was like and I just saved it and then I just drew a set of gear that kind of like was inspired by it so I just try and find um even like sometimes if I'm just in a random shop and I remember I was in like Tesco one time and they had like a Mother's Day thing and they had like all these beautiful colors it was like an orange and purple and I just it wasn't even clothes I just took a photo of it and I was like I feel like I need gear that color so I just found it in the most random places. <laughs> does your does the signature Mila Grace hair you don't do it as much anymore with like the the hat and then the the crimped uh pony t- I don't know what you call them I don't know what they're called but you know what I'm talking about your ponytails yeah. that are have, you do like, want the you do bubbles. want to know what I call them yeah I have a name for them off camera I'll tell you after <laughs> okay um, so Our- I literally just stopped wearing them recently because yeah. I really wanted to get rid of them for a while because if I'm being honest I just felt really ugly I was like I feel ugly I've got these pigtails and this hat and I just feel so goofy and disgusting um and I wanted to get rid of them for a while and then when I did WWE I was like well they've asked me here so I'll stay the same until yeah. whatever and then then when I was doing the indies it was kind of like oh you're the girl with the pigtails so I kept it and so I wrestled a few matches here with it and I was like you know what I feel like it's time like I just want to get rid of it um so I did one match just to test the water to see I was freaking out I was like how do people wrestle with their hair down like I have so much hair I was like am I gonna like be blind and die what's gonna happen (laughs) so I tried it out once and it was fine and um so now rest in peace to the pigtails (laughs) rip (laughs) <laughs> were those were those inspired by the the hip hop little mix or where where did that vision come from for the pigtails? So originally I wore the pigtail just I just had two normal pigtails. Um and it was more because people kept pulling my hair and I was starting to get faulty uh-huh. spots and I was like, right, I need to get this out of my face, like leave my hair alone, bitch. Um and then I was like, this is really plain and boring. And then I I can't really remember where exactly I seen the wee the wee balls was just called. Yeah. Um and then I just tried it out one time. I was like, oh, I love your hair. And then it just kind of stuck. And and then I was going to shows and little kids were wearing their hair like that and stuff. And then it kind of became my thing. So how has it been adjusting to you know you're letting the hair loose, letting it loose? How has that been feeling so far? surprisingly okay I was so nervous I honestly I was like uh, how am I going to do a dive I'm not going to see a thing I'm going to end up dying um I have been still wearing the front bits yeah. back um I think I've made it this weekend just try try it all down just see we'll just risk Ooh. it you know this is the time to experiment you know you're going to be in Japan for a while you you might as well you know you have kind yeah. of the the freedom to do that why not experiment? You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Then you just do something else, you know? I'll just die doing a dive. <laughs> yeah. hey, don't, don't, don't die, please. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you know, when, when it comes to, you know, obviously your ring gear and your presentation is a big part of your identity in the ring right now. Obviously, you've evolved so much in your career. Talk about the process of developing your identity and who kind of Myla is as a character today. She's still very so, bright and colorful, I feel like. That's always been kind of yeah. new. But how, talk us, uh, tell us who Myla is today and kind of that process from that perspective. So I always came out to, um, in the end days, it was Eve, who's that girl? And then that kind of became my thing where it was like, who's that girl? And it was like, oh yeah, because everybody's wondering like, oh, who's she? And then after I was like, wait, 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 no, you aren't wondering anymore. You, you know who I am and I am that girl. So it kind of became that sort of thing. Um, but now, honestly, I feel like I kind of want to warm away from the being, I, I somehow became cute and I'm like, I'm not cute. I'm a grown ass woman. So I'm trying to kind of like warm. That's why I've like bad at the pigtails. Like I want to, I still want to be bright and colorful and be me, but I'm I'm also like, I want to be took more serious. Like if people not taking me serious because I have pigtails and I have bright clothes like so I'm kind of trying to like not fully but I'm going to ease away from it a little bit because I just want to be took more serious as a competitor and not just some cute little girl with blonde pigtails you know yeah you so know, we'll that's, see that's fair too especially in Japan too where I mean the not that they're like more serious but they are quieter which can be construed as more serious I guess you know and, and more respectful especially too that you know 
that's something it's going to be an interesting chapter to see what Miley Grace in more serious mode too. you know, especially if you're going to be going after these championships, these various championships, you know, I think that's a way to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so far in your career, how do you think you've grown as a person? Obviously, character wise, that's going to be part of it. How do you think you've grown as a person and as a competitor thus far? I feel like I have become someone who's just always been so grateful to be here. Like, especially after lockdown, I always like took time to like soak everything in and be like, oh my God, I'm here. or Oh my God, I'm there. But honestly, the past few weeks, I'm like, right, be grateful. But like now I need to find my edge. I need to find that aggression again. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I need to not be this cute little bubbly girl anymore like I honestly and I'm saying this now that's this is this is to come I'm fed up with being cute and just happy to be there like I want to be took serious I don't I don't care that I'm blonde I don't know why you think I'm cute I'm I, I'm a grown-up I'm not cute I don't know where this came from like I want to be took serious like I should be took serious like I can go in the ring and you just seeing this blonde girl and just assuming that I can't like I'm fed up with it and this is me saying I that it's time for people to take me serious I think you're going to be taking a page out of your good friend the feisty flame of Ireland uh (laughs) Amira it seems like get some feistiness (laughs) to you I'm ready for it I'm ready yeah (laughs) two more questions for you you know as you assess your run in Marigold so far is there a particular match or performance that you were the most proud of and why Honestly, I feel like I never feel like that with a match. Like anytime I have a match, I feel like I grow every single time. And I know people say it, but I, I really do feel like every time I have a match, I get better. So if I had a match two weeks ago that I was part of, I'll probably look back now and be like, oh, I would never do that anymore. So I don't, there's not one in particular, but like all the matches in general, I'm part of because I really do feel like every single time I am growing and I am getting better. Yeah. And, you know, as you're looking now towards the future, what are some of your personal and professional goals for Marigold and obviously well beyond? I am not leaving Japan until I win a title. Like, I want a title. I know why I'm coming up. Like, when I wanted to come here, it was with the intention to win gold in Japan. So I'm not leaving here without it. Um, That's one of my biggest goals um I do have a lot of other things I do have a lot of other exciting stuff coming up next year but um well just have to (laughs) wait and see (laughs) well we look forward to whatever you have obviously like you said at the time of recording this you're gonna be in the tag team title tournament that's coming up you and Zeta have a tough challenge ahead of you not only with yourselves but with your opponents as well but we are wishing you luck nonetheless Mila. hopefully by the next time we talk to you you'll have some gold strapped around your waist whether yes it's tag titles yes you will or, I, I will or maybe you you give Suri a run for her money you know who knows yeah that's it that's it. it before we let you go please let the listeners know where they can find you on social media and support you Okay, so all mine are the exact same. My Twitter slash X, my Instagram, my TikTok. It's all Myla Grace underscore X. It's underscore, isn't that the correct word for that, by the way? Yes. Like the, not the dash, the under, yeah. Yes. So Myla Grace underscore X. And it's Myla M-Y-L-A. Some people, I don't know why they think it's M-I. I'm like, I oh. it's deliberately spelled with a Y that's, that's so you know Mila. it's my. That's Mila. Yeah, thank oh, you. Interesting. Thank you. Interesting. Well, Myla, thank you so much for chatting with me here today, all the way from the opposite side of the world in Japan to the United States. Myla, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you so, so much. (laughs)